This episode of The Unstarving Musician is sponsored by Liner Notes. Learn from the hundreds of musicians and industry pros I've spoken with for The Unstarving Musician on topics such as marketing, songwriting, touring, sync licensing, and much more. Sign up for Liner Notes. Liner Notes is an email newsletter from yours truly in which I share some of the best knowledge gems garnered from the many conversations featured on The Unstarving Musician. You'll also be privy to the latest podcast episodes and Liner Notes subscriber exclusives. Sign up at unstarvingmusician.com. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. This is The Unstarving Musician. I'm Robonzo. This is my podcast. It features conversations with independent music artists and industry professionals with occasional special topic episodes featuring yours truly, a glimpse into the minds of my varied guests, all intended to help independent music artists better understand the marketing, business, and creative processes that empower us to do more of what we love, make music. Thank you for joining me for another episode. Always a pleasure to be in your earbuds. Well, since last time I recorded founding member of the Eagles bassist Randy Meisner passed away and we also lost Sinead O'Connor, two artists I have a lot of admiration for and whose music I loved. You will be missed. I track drums for an upcoming collaboration with my good friend Lance, a high school bandmate and I think we actually played in our first band together. In fact, I know we did. That's going to be fun. And I'm working on an acoustic version of New Gods Part 2 with my original collaborator, Peter Rand, something I can perform on occasion. Should be fun. My guest for this episode is Minus Cube, also known as Joe, and I realize I don't know his last name. (laughs) He is a musician and studio engineer. He's had a very busy year. We talked about five singles and an upcoming album, much of which was done with another artist named JJ Lovegrove, who was featured in episode 214. Minus Cube and JJ Lovegrove have a new single out tomorrow as I record this intro for you, August 3rd of 2023. Joe and I had a long and pleasant conversation in which we talk about his busy year, capturing processes for recording and just making music, maintaining a sense of enjoyment while making music, and the occasional struggle to stay excited. That's kind of a shared experience we talk about. Reinventing his output, his production learning journey, collaborating with J.J. Lovegrove. He asks me about playing drums. We also talk about his solo work, his recording setup, and just have some general studio talk, and his outlook for the rest of the year. Without further ado, here is me talking to Minus Cube. Where in the UK do you reside? Um, I live in Cornwall, in which is in the southwest of the UK, which is... Uh, not generally when it, where, wherever you are there you're not too far from the beach which is quite nice or at least some kind of coastline which is quite nice but, oh, very um, nice. Uh, yeah weather isn't exactly very summery today <laughs> so uh <laughs> well, where else are you in a city called queretaro in mexico not too far from mexico city oh cool yeah yeah i think uh when i met our mutual acquaintance JJ Lovegrove. I think I was in Panama. Pretty sure I was in Panama. Yeah, we we moved here. My wife and I moved here about a year and some months ago. Coming up on a year and a half, I guess. Ah, huh, cool. Mm, yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think I, I remember listening to that to that one which you did, and I think I recall you saying Panama now rings a bell with me. So, um, yeah, oh, that's nice. She's coming on again soon. I I um I Is had. She? Yeah, I had time scheduled with her to sort of do a special project kind of episode, but then she has it. We had to postpone, and she has the new release. So I think I'll just I'll combine the original att- intent with um, with a normal interview, so I can hear about what what she and you guys have been up to. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's been quite a, <laughs> it's been quite the year of pro- productivity. <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, I noticed. I was like, "Wow, you've had a busy year. You have at least five singles and an album. Did is there more?" Well, no. I mean, <laughs> I think um, for the last year, pretty much, we've done. My main focus has been with with Judy's album. We've yeah, I, I produced it and I also recorded a lot of tracks for it, just because the songs which we've worked on together you know they they start off in a certain format and then 
there's like generally you know a vision for those songs which uh, we'll we'll work on and I'll try and realize them you know and more between us we'll try and realize them that vision yeah there's because sometimes those tracks come in as just like uh like with maybe just a piano and vocal track to start mm. with but actually maybe the vision is that it should have huge drums and have a 1980s kind of vibe to it so <laughs> there's a lot of trial and error and but most you know it's always good fun though that's the the main thing we, we always get there in the end but uh, there's definitely a lot of un unheard versions of these songs when they began <laughs> I'd, I'd love to hear some of those sometime no no I, you can let you can let me hear them someday i hope <laughs> yeah i quite like actually i quite like to do like a a video like um on the the production side at least maybe sort of flying the flag for the production side of the lifespan of one of these songs maybe you know how it began how it ended might be quite interesting for yeah some people I, I like that kind of stuff. I, I don't know how much others do, but like I've, I've only done a couple of singles and I tried to do these sort of retrospective uh, going backwards from starting with mm. the, the just before the, the actual release and then going back until I get to the iPhone, you know, idea or something. <laughs> yeah, and, that's it. It's interesting though, isn't it? It's... Yeah, yeah, it's kind of fun. For me, it was fun to drip that stuff out, you know, a little at a time. Unfortunately, like one of them, I, I wasn't um, in control of the final engineering and mastering, and, and not that it would be a huge thing for me to get it, but my, a friend of mine, a collaborator and friend, um, with the second one, my our tracks kind of got buried in a lot of his work, so I haven't I haven't uh, nudged him enough to 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 try and get to some of the uh, the root mm. tracks. But yeah, I think that would be really fun for you and and her. <laughs> yeah, it's. It's like artwork, really, isn't it? I think you know, you, if you do a painting, you start somewhere, and then you just add things and add layers to it, or new ideas come along, and then often what you're left with is, well, hopefully it's the right thing. You know, hopefully it's how you how you envisioned it to be. But um, <laughs> it's quite there's quite a good fun, a good joy in going back and seeing where you've where you've come from as well. How Sometimes I, I, I listen back to some of the early versions and I thought, oh yeah, this is this is good, you know. <laughs> and then I'm like rudely surprised by how sort of terrible it sounded at the beginning. But um <laughs> you've got to go there and sort of work through it, I think, you know, to get to the end part, which you know, yeah, we know exactly that. That's funny. I um when I listen to the the couple of things that I have done from the beginning, I'm like, that sounds up, you know. It sounds pretty good, but you know, I'm, I'm talking about like laying down acoustic drum tracks and then some vocals. And I'm 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 young as a singer in that I haven't really been doing it that long seriously. So I always kind of think, oh, I wish I could have done that better. But um, when I listen to the beginning, the the only things I might laugh at is like, well, here was the original demo I sent to my friend to see if he was interested in recording it with me with me playing guitar, and I'm not much of a guitar player, so that's kind of funny. But <laughs> we it's all got to start somewhere, and that's. Um... You know, yeah, there's however we do it, there's, there's good fun. And it, hopefully, you know, trying to maintain that part of it is something that I've, uh, I always try to keep in my head, just maintaining the, the enjoyment aspect of it. Um, I think, sure. you know, it's quite easy to get quite wrapped up in everything and lose focus of that part. Uh, I've definitely done that a lot of times. Um, sometimes it, the inspiration comes in waves, but you have to do. I always try to just do uh, things around in and around music that are just enjoyable as well, you know, so that you don't kind of lose the the fire or the spark of excitement to do it. I know it's a it's a battle sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it's not always that easy, but um, it's good to always try and enjoy what what you're doing. It, man, that's so true. I'm sitting here thinking about the. I mean, it happens pretty regularly. I'm like, okay. I got to go work on this. Or I got to go practice. You know, it's not like I'm so looking forward to it. Once I'm doing it, I'm, I'm good. But it's like, um, it's, it's kind of a reminder hearing you say it that way that I got to make sure I'm doing something that just maybe for me, it has to be completely self-indulgent to be, you know, on a regular basis so that when I work on the other stuff, I, I can look more forward to it, hopefully. But yeah, it's also really annoying when you, you really want to do something creative like that. And then as soon as you begin, uh, suddenly that whole, 
vibe <laughs> just goes and leaves your body completely and you're like oh man why i was so looking forward to doing this and suddenly uh everything you had been excited for just suddenly evaporates <laughs> i don't know maybe that was just me i don't know if you had uh, no, that going on but. no totally yes i'm mostly struggle in this way when i'm working on things vocally and usually the these days that's those are like to cover something you know do a recording of some cover and i'll just it's can be very discouraging <laughs> but even i've been drumming for years and um <clears throat> but i still sometimes i kind of sit down and I'm, i don't know what it is and just get once it's going it's all good and you know i get in the flow and it's great and some of the some of the live performances are feel very good and some are like well you know too bad i wasn't able to make more time to prepare for that one but it was okay <laughs> <laughs> but even even in that realm something that i'm completely comfortable with there are times yeah where i'm like you know making myself do it <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little sad but <laughs> but i guess that's well, maybe I, we're not alone no i don't think so at all yeah i think we're not alone and also we are own worst crit critics as well so um at least you know I'm, i am <laughs> so um i think when you say you know about this live performance that maybe something happened that sticks out in your mind like oh man i wish i could have done this part differently um but then I, at least back in the day when i performed a lot as well um you would just no one would know <laughs> i think we just it just stands out in your mind because you either rehearse or you're so expecting this part to sound a certain way in your own mind. And there's nobody else that's there watching that would even have a clue that that's how it was going to be. So um, you can sort of beat yourself up about doing something wrong when actually, you know, it's really not that bad. <laughs> yeah. In my mind, I'm, I'm, I'll look up and I'll be like, Oh, that guy heard it. He, he definitely heard it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pointing at you. I know <laughs> it's, a, it's a smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So do you still do the trio band thing? I feel like I don't know much about what you're doing, but I was perusing a lot of these different things that you've done both by yourself and with Judy and maybe with some other people, but do you still do the trio band? No, actually, no, it was, um, it, I sort of slightly reinvented my, <laughs> my, my output a little bit, but it was, uh, it was a, tr a trio. There was three of us, which, um, actually, we, we, the singer in that group of the three, when we, there's the three of us, was in uh, USA. So the, um, the myself and a drummer were actually in the UK. So the whole concept of being this sort of bizarre, remote, not really getting together in a rehearsal room band um, began because of his location. And that was probably about maybe 2014 or so. So yeah, probably about maybe 10. 10 years ago I guess um we started to do that so the concept of each recording things and then sending it to me and then I would start putting it together began basically <laughs> and it was quite unusual at the time I think a lot of people work this way now just through like the convenience of technology but um yeah years before that I was in like a full band uh, with four of us in the UK and we would do the very traditional rehearsing frequently playing shows and trying to record music when we could and then that sort of fizzled out eventually and some time later myself and the drummer from that band we, we picked it up and wrote some some music and sort of readapted some existing songs that we never really got to finish with this singer and it was that kind of alternative rock slightly uh grunge inspired uh heavier rock thing which we all just really love doing um and we did do that for quite a long time um we released uh three albums and sort of various other little songs here and there but three sort of full albums that way which were self-produced and self-released but that was really where i sort of started to learn production and i'm still learning i'm by no means like amazing at, at it because there's so much stuff to learn but when i listen back to the first album that we did <laughs> i'm like man i wish i'd have done that differently <laughs> because <laughs> um didn't really have very good equipment and mixed it on stuff that wasn't really 
ideal for mixing so so it sounds a way which i'm i was happy with at the time but looking back i, I realized man, i could definitely have done that better but you kind of learn by doing that and you grow by doing that i think so it's like a little snapshot in time rather than some project where you should revisit it and make it a whole load better <laughs> years later maybe <laughs> as tempting as it is so we yeah we did that for a few years and it was just a lot of fun i think the pressure was off in terms of needing to rehearse all the time and then needing to find gigs and uh try and record stuff um there was we we did pressure ourselves quite a lot in that band and we were progressing actually quite well uh and had like one or two sort of record offered record deal offers which were terrible ones which we turned down <laughs> immediately pretty much mm -hmm. um but the hope was back then you know oh it would just be great to release something that was our main aim if we could record and release something but the sort of access to distribution like we have now where you, it's fairly straightforward to be able to self-release music uh, and put it out to streaming sites uh, or wherever that was in, in sort of 2005 to 2008 that was more of a slightly more difficult prospect so uh, we, we pushed ourselves hard to try and get in front of people that could do that you know um so after all that ended it was just fun you know it was just let's just do this and enjoy it and have no real pressure to well have none of the pressures that we sort of experienced before with it but actually uh, just enjoy it and uh, but still hopefully write good music <laughs> you know that was the main aim just make sure it doesn't suck you know but um uh we did that for some time and then uh i think it was about 2020 the the singer michael he was he just kind of got a bit tired of doing uh, music in general i think um it wasn't anything specific to what we were doing he, he was just one day said i'm you know not really feeling it recording i'd rather just play for myself you know play music for myself and, and so on so i can't argue with that you know <laughs> it was just yeah of course totally understand um and that was the point where i was i became a little bit in no man's land in music music world <laughs> because uh, suddenly everything I've been doing for sort of eight years or seven years was uh, came to a stop um, so I remember saying to him like I, I just I've got to carry on doing music um, and that group was was called Minus Cube which was like a group uh, name um, but with the world of social media and everything you know it takes ages these days to try and build up that kind of presence so I was reluctant to just leave it there and start all over again with something else because um, it, it, the amount of work and time it takes to to get some people that are interested in what you're doing um, and start all over again was kind of a bit soul destroying to me. So that's why the name carried through basically. But ultimately, that name is just like an artist name now um, for me. When I uh, after he finished, uh, I was just looking to do carry on doing music. So um, I looked for a singer and found Judy's music, um, just completely on the off chance, I think, or maybe it had been someone had shared a song of mine and it had, through the gift of social media <laughs> that does exist, <laughs> our paths crossed somehow, you know. So I just randomly just got in contact just to see. If, there, if she was interested in doing a like a collaboration with me, uh, maybe we would do a cover song just to see how things would would start, you know, that way. At least it wasn't the pressure of writing something original, but it was a cover song that we could find a common ground with. Um, so we did a Nine Inch Nails cover of the song uh, Right Where It Belongs, which I really love that song, and uh, she did too. So we sort of tried to mix it up a bit and make it a bit, bit unique and it worked really well so then we're like maybe we should try an original song <laughs> and see how it goes um and we did that um there was a song called autopilots which i had written that the music for it quite a while before actually and it was frustrating me because i'd had it sitting around for ages 
maybe a, at least a year. <laughs> I thought, I really want to finish this song. And so we kind of started to work on that together. And she wrote the lyrics and sang for it. And that was, we released that as like the first original song, which we sort of collaborated on. And then did a couple more like that of music that I'd had written. And then Judy had said that she you know, had songs of her own. Would I be interested in producing them? So when she did the, her first EP, which was, uh, trying to remember when that was, the end of 2021, I think, maybe, somewhere around that time. Okay. I was obviously keen to get into production. So that was where this other type of collaborating began, where she was obviously releasing music under her name as uh, music which she's she's obviously you know written herself um, and then we've worked together and combined our brains to make the end result so uh, that was a really good project that, that pushed me greatly as well because I'd never really I'd done stuff on things that I had written you know so you're sort of a little bit more free when with your own emotions when you have written a song that you can Oh, maybe I just delete this section from the middle, you know, or mm. when does your own come from your own self, you can maybe feel a little bit more free. So with the fact that Judy had written songs and they come from, from the heart, you are a little bit initially a little bit reluctant to change too much stuff. So I was felt very careful. I needed to be very careful that I wasn't, you know, doing anything that was outrageous and, we would sort of discuss changes and things like that ourselves until we got to the end result. And then it's carried on in this, in this manner, really, uh, where we've released a few collaboration songs of music that I've had written myself. And then, um, and then Judy had, uh, after she'd done the EP, she said, I've got this album, which I want to do, you know, should we work on it together kind of sort of thing? <laughs> and um, I was like, yeah, of course, it would be great. And it was at least a year of, I think we started it last March. So it's been about, yeah, just over a year of almost continuous work, <laughs> but That's a cool. lot of learning and, um, you know, learning new things, sort of um, researching some genres of music, which I wasn't particularly hugely knowledgeable of but still enjoyed so that's I think that's the other part of what's kind of worked how it's worked quite well for us really is that in the musical backgrounds that we've had together they're slightly they come from slightly different worlds and mine was from a more heavier background and Judy's not so heavy in terms of music style but collectively we've sort of created this sort of cinematic type of slightly heavy but melodic um creation you know um, yeah 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 I, I i hear the i th you know as you're telling me this story i was thinking well she clearly had some sort of heaviness in the um, the sound that she had envisioned that may just be a pure product of your uh, collaboration but she does have this kind of beautiful dark sensibility to, to, to her her style of writing which i guess perhaps that lent itself to this heavy side that you have. Yeah, I agree. Um, I've, because I've kind of mostly been, my musical background mostly was like blues and guitar based music. So, but predominantly blues via my dad who would listen to Pink Floyd and Hendrix and uh, Eric Clapton and just all of these great blues musicians. So there's, whether well, blues is not necessarily that heavy, but it pulls into that emotional part of you, which is undeniable. You know, you can't deny that it makes you feel a certain way when you listen to blues music. And um, for me, I was like, I love blues and also I love rock and heavier things and other, other types of uh, music as well. But it's always got to be rooted in that kind of emotional pull, you know, that's maybe slightly darker or it's maybe in the minor key <laughs> where people would say, oh, this sounds so miserable. You know, you don't do any happy songs, but <laughs> I, can't, I literally can't do happy songs very well. <laughs> um, it's got to make you feel a certain way. And because it's, you know, blues is kind of hardwired in your soul. Sometimes a lot of blues is in minor key. Some of it isn't obviously, but um, 
you know that's it's that kind of emotional pull i think which works so when her lyrics are or have a sort of maybe a dark edge or a very personal edge to them and the music lends to that as well it works well collectively i think um, yeah i think so i think so is yeah. is dark room the latest thing that you and she have done yes it's um yes it's just, that single is from her upcoming album which is coming out in the uh 18th of august i think it is 18 okay. i think it's the 18th of august and there's another single i believe which is going to come out on maybe the 4th of august as well just to kind of you know one last final awareness push for this album um which is also quite an exciting single actually but yeah dark room was released uh just just last week i think and um yeah it was a quite a, a joy to create definitely i made the largest sounding drums i think i've ever done <laughs> for that track <laughs> do you pro are those programmed or are you playing or is someone else playing them it's um no it's programmed um mm -hmm. i wish i could play the drums i really do i don't know how you how you how do you do it it's just the sort of um <laughs> the coordination i think is <laughs> supreme but i don't think i have the ability to <laughs> separate my hands and legs <laughs> the way you do I think it's time for you to get a drum set or dust off the one that you've been thinking of playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, yeah, if, if I had enough room, I'd love to actually. But, um, it's difficult. It's so difficult. I, I have tried playing them before, but it's not come naturally to me, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when I was a, a kid and you know got an interest in playing music with some fellow friends i wanted to play guitar but some oh you know what it was my sister-in-law who just passed away like literally this week but i'm um, sorry oh, for that sorry. for that downer note yeah um but she gave me a, her high school band snare drum it was a nice ludwig acrylite drum and my older brother who was her her husband he had played drums i guess as a teenager and he'd held on to this nice uh, Zildjian symbol he, he had and and I guess his drum throne so I had uh was almost there you know had a snare and a symbol <laughs> and, and a seat yeah. <laughs> so it was just made sense to start doing it so that was like probably the first um thing I did with my my friends and then uh then of course this the usual story my mom broke down and bought me a drum set and I was off <laughs> very good yeah from constant persuasion right <laughs> um, you know I don't know man I I uh I can't remember, oh, you know, I think my friend, my guitar player friend who then wanted to be in a, you know, have a, for us to have a band, I think he found, that, I, gosh, I hadn't thought about this in years, but I think he found a classified advert in, in the newspaper, uh, which he, he gave to me and, and I showed to my mom and she just bought it for me. So anyway, Brilliant. That's, nice. yep. that's great. It's, I mean, it's always a big help when your parents encourage it too oh yeah um, all, the, all the bands were at my house practicing all the time at my mom's house that's, <laughs> that's actually quite funny because that's how it was with me and the drummer in my band too we met at college and um you know bless his parents his his room his bedroom was downstairs uh really sort of next door to the kitchen pretty much and um he had a full drum kit in there and from the time I was at college, probably even eight, 18, 19 years old, to um, we were in in his room with my guitar amp and his drums. <laughs> they must have never been able to hear anything that they watched on television <laughs> for, for years <laughs> when we were there. But That's they funny. never, yeah, they didn't like ever complain about how much noise we made. So it was, um, yeah, kind of <laughs> encouraging at least that they weren't we weren't completely annoying them the whole time. But um, yeah, they had, they had some some patience. <laughs> but, um, probably, did you find like, it came? Well, sorry, I know. I was uh, our parents probably. I was thinking, well, at least we know where they are and what they're doing, more or less. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, perhaps that's the. They're happy with that. <laughs> um, did you find that learning drums came quite naturally to you, or was it sort of a you know? It seems like a challenge to me. I... It actually did. I I guess I'm a bit of a you know visual learner that way w w where drums are concerned because um i started kind of figuring out simple things by watching you know drummers on television and then as i think about it as i'm 
uh, got older and was playing, you know, at clubs and whatnot, I, I happened to live by a, a ver- very good music university. Sadly, I never uh, were it was inside those doors taking classes, but I was always seeing um, students and graduates from that school because of the area that I lived in, and so I'd I'd watch these guys a lot and pick up a lot of things. But yeah, from the time I started, it was for some reason <laughs> fairly easy for me. <laughs> Oh, great. Yeah. Kind of I mean, it's meant to be. Yeah. Kind of lucky that way. And when did, uh, when did you and Judy release better? Um, that was, I think, 2021. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Um, that was one of those other tracks that I'd had the music for, for quite a long, well, not a huge while, actually. I'd started it quite a long time back you know you just get ideas for things and it sat as a kind of skeleton for a while and it wasn't until we we started writing some things together that i really had some push to finish it and and drop uh, you know get it done so yeah i think it was 2021 as well that's cool i'm just trying to piece together some chronology and it's kind of hard when you're looking at uh unless someone has like thoughtfully listed their discography for you in some sort of order <laughs> you know on their website or, or on wikipedia yeah. but but yeah on so my, um yeah on the band camp my band camp page i think they're all in order there from okay the time that they came out but yeah we did autopilots and better and a song called desire line as well that were like collaborations that we'd done which were music that I had written basically, um, and Judy had uh, written the lyrics for and the vocals, obviously, and then I just sort of produced them. Um, and in between all those times, we did some other covers as well. We've done some other cover songs, and we created uh, Judy's EP and this album as well. So, yeah, it's been pretty non stop actually now, coming to think of it, <laughs> which I'm quite well, happy s- about. They, I was going to say they sound great, and I was also going to mention, I believe, that uh, when I first became acquainted with Judy, was, I'm in the music in a music marketing group that I'm sure she's talked about with you, and your your name came up. She was telling us about, uh, you know, this guy she was collaborating with, and you know, I'll never forget, she was lamenting that and this is social media for you, I guess she was lamenting that some of your original fans really hated (laughs) what we're doing together. And I was like, ah, well, you know, I mean, it means you're doing something different, you know, and and, uh, you're you're never going to capture, if when you're in a situation like that, you're never going to capture everyone. So you're you're off, you guys are off to capture a new group of fans and maybe some of the original ones. I don't really know that anyone actually ever said to me, like, they were unhappy, they you know what you what are you doing <laughs> i don't think I, I recall anybody really kind of being unhappy with with the output that i had done but um if they did then you know fair enough i suppose but uh i think that um you know i just i just love music so um if if there's a chance to make it and make hopefully good music uh then um i don't really I don't really mind everything that I do has a kind of vibe to it, I think, because it's you as a musician playing it. So um, I think no matter what I try to do with the guitar, for example, it still just ends up sounding to me like, oh, I've played that. And um, I don't know whether that's good or bad, to be honest. But yeah, you know, there's um, there's a joy in trying new things as well. Uh, and I I think actually one of the things that I've always tried to aim for in creating music is to not be like pigeonholed too much into one one style only and it's sort of worked (laughs) in in various bands i've been in it's it's been they've been rock bands or they've been relatively alternative rock or heavy but always with some other element that we've managed to include in them whether it's acoustic guitar stuff or something music with some strings in it or something that just is slightly different to you know acdc for example where you know very much what you expect from an acdc album um, and that's cool because that's them and uh, i've tried to include things that would uh, allow maybe if i was to do an acoustic album it wouldn't be too 
bizarre you know or too unexpected because i've kind of included those elements in other songs at least that was my thinking behind it but um it's been actually just a good a good a joy and a good learning experience to um write stuff write strings and do ambient songs and things that i've always loved doing if yeah, if some people it's not their thing then that's completely cool <laughs> But um, it's nice to try different things, I think, with music sometimes. Yeah, sure. And it's always going to not be, something's always going to be someone's, not someone's thing anyway. So it's, uh, you know, yeah. gosh, you just got to do what um, what uh, helps you fulfill the, the sense of adventure and creativity. So I think that's um, that's good. That's good. So speaking of, yeah. um, and I've lost the word that you used, but I, I it made me think of a question I wanted to ask you, and that was just to tell me about, can, or can you tell me about your Dreamscapes album? Because that seemed, um, I like somewhat of a departure. I, I read, I think, on your Bandcamp, it was sort of an experiment. Although, also, I read that it had elements from previous recordings in it. Yeah, that was. Um, <laughs> it was a okay. The idea behind it, I think, started because uh, when you when I listen to songs that I've created, all those songs on that that little EP um, were. There are other existing songs that are maybe a bit heavier in nature, and I sometimes this uh, listen back to through the finished session and turn off a bunch of tracks just to see because I like to record a lot of tracks when I record music and there's things that sit underneath that are so subtle maybe they don't always come out in the mix but there's things that are there underneath doing something hopefully to kind of fill out, fill out the sound or make some interesting moment of music. And uh, sometimes when those guitars are playing, it gets totally swamped by them. So sometimes I just like to go back and turn off all the guitars or particular sort of heavy elements to those tracks and just listen to what was left. And it came from doing that because I would sit and listen and think, actually, this sounds so different, but it's still a song that I recognize. Uh, and I think, I don't know if I just, um, as an experiment, just like exported one song and I seem to recall sending it to Judy and she was like, oh, you should, you know, maybe it's worth re releasing them, you know, just as a, uh, as an EP for a bit of fun. <laughs> so I think maybe that would be a good thing. Um, in these days now, thankfully we can release stuff whenever we want. So, uh, I just got inspired to do that basically. And I sort of reworked a couple of songs that um, that did exist already. Uh, took all the guitars out, took all the drums out as well. And just, they're basically what's left behind pretty much. It didn't take a huge amount of time to create because essentially the work had already been done, you know? And also I took all the vocals off as well, um, which is another, <laughs> another thing. So the intention behind it was really like something to kind of listen to in the background, maybe. I don't know if you've ever seen on, on like YouTube or um, various places that there's some channels that people create which just have, you know, music to study with or music to have on in the background. Yeah. Or to sort of have on when you fall asleep. It was that sort of um, intention with this really i don't know if it works or not i don't know if anyone could fall asleep to, <laughs> to what i had made but um if there's any hope in it just being some kind of relaxing element to have on in the background or to just listen to and it wasn't overwhelmingly loud and you know <laughs> all of that element to it that was the aim yeah so it was a fun experiment really i think I'm... to try and make calm songs out of heavy songs yeah yeah it's interesting um i sometimes will play stuff to see or with the intention of keeping my my dog and my cat calm <laughs> yeah not that they're not that they're that crazy or anything but like i I just enjoy watching their reaction if like there's maybe classical music or some specific band that they seem to like or some that they don't like. So anyway, I'm going to play Dreamscapes for my cat and my dog. I'll report back and let you know what their sentiment is. <laughs> yeah, please do. Hopefully there's no, there's no um, that I'm aware of, there's no kind of dodgy frequencies in there that it's going <laughs> to beyond the realms of human hearing that is going to rile them up. But yeah, it's funny. I have a cat actually. And sometimes um, 
guilty of like leaving something on in the background whilst she is asleep <laughs> because you just think maybe it sort of provides some kind of comfort, you know, in the, in the background for them. That it's not a completely silent room. Um, maybe that's just a human thing. Maybe they actually prefer silence. I don't know. But yeah, please let me know <laughs> how, it, how they get <laughs> well, on. <laughs> I have to tell you, I've mentioned this on the podcast a few times and I tell people about it all the time, but my cat gets pissed off when I'm practicing vocals. He just like, stop that. When it was... <laughs> It's pretty funny. Oh, I'm like, so my goal there's, is to to sing where he's not disturbed by it. <laughs> yeah, there's like they just probably want the attention on themselves more than anything. But um, they, yeah, they're funny old things. Yeah, Cats, it's pretty funny. Right? Lately, he seems to be directing the uh, ensuing aggression at the dog, so that way he doesn't terrorize me. So it kind of works out okay lately. But <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, wow. Well, yeah. So tell me a little bit about your your recording setup, your your workshop, your place of work, <laughs> your creation? Um, <laughs> it's actually quite minimal, to be honest. I don't have loads of loads of gear. I, I've tried to operate in over the years on just like stuff that I, I need to get the job done. And that went from having amplifiers and miking them up and back in the day an acoustic drum kit which i didn't play obviously <laughs> um and miking that all up and recording it to uh, you know sort of welcoming the advent of digital recording as the years went by so uh yeah for me it's i, I don't have any amps i just it's all direct in which makes life a lot easier uh, in that respect you know but obviously you lose a certain thing and not having a an, an amp playing loudly in a room near you for me it was more about the convenience side of it and also the space because i just don't have the room for, for all of those things unfortunately yeah it's, it's quite a minimal setup uh, the one of the things which i actually kind of discovered was helpful for me at least was uh, when i started recording like direct guitars was to spend time actually finding you know sounds and guitar sounds that actually worked for me and worked it within music that i was making and then tried to stick with them as time's gone by so i do experiment with guitar sounds and you know, change things up a bit but also uh i was wanting to try and keep the that part of searching for sounds and drum sounds and so on um to a, a minimum for every song that i create you know, it was like trying to invent a consistency, but find sounds that work, first of all. So I, I did spend ages doing that sort of groundwork. And then uh, when I found things that worked, it was like, okay, now I can, when I'm inspired, I can make something, record something, and I don't have to be continually dialing things in and, you know, too much. At least initially, obviously the production part afterwards takes ages but um it was like, i just need something i can get you know inspired with to play quickly when i have an idea so because you know they come at really awkward times usually <laughs> i don't know about you but <laughs> i always find the song ideas come the worst times possible like if you're driving in your car or in a, so i don't know just doing something that's completely nowhere near where you would like to be <laughs> so, um <laughs> So yeah, it was yeah. It's it's fairly minimal to be honest, but um, it works okay. You know, I'm quite happy with it. What about your uh, DAW? Do you by chance use Logic or, or Pro Tools or something else? I use Ableton, okay. um, which I think traditionally wasn't necessarily. I don't know. I thought it was always aimed at like live performance a little bit more and um, other styles of music over rock. But then it's very flexible. You can do anything with it. So. Uh, yeah, it was one of those things where I didn't know which one to use at the beginning. Um, I don't know how you might, which one do you use out of curiosity? Um, logic. And for me, I mean, I heard, I'd heard enough about it and, and I started out on GarageBand and, and because I had a Mac, you know, it was there. And yeah. then um, it was actually this podcast. Wait, was it the podcast? No, it was actually wanting to record uh, drums for my first song that I was like I should probably um, upgrade to Logic 
uh, I don't know if it was really necessary, but uh, I'm really happy that I did. And, uh, you know, I have scarcely scratched the surface of its <laughs> abilities. I, I've, um, what I've done in the past and like what I'm, uh, uh, the pro the recording project I'm, uh, working on now, I really just focus on trying to engineer a good raw drum sound in the room. And so I don't mess around, haven't to date, like messed around with mixing much. Uh, in fact, the two singles that I did, I had a friend who's a professional studio guy and a great musician. So he did, he did that part. But uh, yeah, my focus has really been on like, how do I get the you know, a good sound off the drum kit and the mic, you know, yeah. like the most of the mics and all that. So, and then I have a mix of um, Shure and Audix uh, mics for the drum kit. <clears throat> and uh, I have had one friend uh, about a year ago busting my busting my balls, uh, as they say, to, <laughs> to upgrade my, my overheads. But I, do, I use um, a couple of SM57s for, for overheads and they seem to do fine. But I know that you can yeah. just spend fortunes on microphones, right? <laughs> Yeah, this is the thing, you know, it's like a never ending minefield of of stuff that you could you could upgrade to and you could buy, which um it is confusing in itself actually. <laughs> when you once you start delving into like which are good overhead mics, um, you know, there's a whole choice of things. But I'm also a believer in um if it's not broke and don't fix it and if you've got something that works for you that you're happy with, then that's the main thing. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be, uh, you know, anything grand and, and uh, hugely expensive necessarily if it, if it gets the job done for you. And I mean, great work on getting a good drum sound. That's something that's always, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, miking up drums. I've not done for a long time, but it, uh, only because I've not really needed to, but um, yeah, there's a challenge in getting that, in getting that sounding good, and then never touching your microphones afterwards as well. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that that's unfortunately something that's a curse for me because um, I I do podcasting, and then in in the same space where I'll record drums, in the same space where I occasionally have band rehearsals here, and this, so there's this, and you know that I have one drum set because we've moved around over the years a bit, and. Uh, so I just had one, and so if that if I'm playing a gig, that one's got to go with me. So it's like constantly yeah. reconfiguring things. I was lucky, like this week. I mean, there are, and it's not always like this, but I had the kind of setup for the podcast uh, two days in a row. Like I didn't have to do anything today. I was able to pop out here and and turn on Zoom for our call today, which was nice. But um, as it is right now, like I'm, I was thinking today, like I should record the, the scratch track for my friend who's going to play guitar on uh, this tune I'm working on and I got to, you know, get all the mics back in place, <laughs> but I've, I've gotten better with like, I'm documenting in my room, you know, this is sort of a new room for me. So I'm <clears throat> documenting um, all the, uh, you know, settings, levels and blah, 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 yeah. blah. So that, uh, you know, I'm using some of the same gear for rehearsal. So I'm like writing, you know, uh, jotting that stuff down on the computer so I can reference it and hopefully be a little quicker from between. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, that is it's quite that is quite a challenge when you're in a space that needs you know relatively continual movement or adjusting or that sort of thing. Um, totally, I've definitely had times where we've done done recordings and then you know had to go back a week later and oh this part was so so bad we've got to do it again you know and then the drums sound completely different and oh I know you've got a whole battle and on your hand to try and work that part out but um yeah well, it's, it's one of those joys of music same with guitar recording as well if you mic your amps well it's a learning experience I'm, I'm reminded that the second song i released i actually finished the drum track it was a middle section that was supposed to have a little kind of solo thingy nothing too complicated but i finished it in a different room than i had done the rest of the entire track and it's such a, an interesting learning experience between, you know, the different room that you're in and the capability of the mics and then, you know, whoever you're working with or whether you're doing the final um, production, the, you know, these tools are so great. And, and I actually, it's kind of funny, I actually get a lot of enjoyment out of trying, I mean, really, you have to admit the stuff that um, 
you and I have been able to work with over, let's call it, you know, well, for me, it's only been a few years for you, like maybe 10 years is so far advanced over what some really great recordings had available to them. So I kind of, it's kind of interesting to me to like, see, can I make this work? Like it's not necessarily like I have a guitar for instance, that um, I've done a little bit of recording with. It's not an, it's not a great guitar. It's plays well, but it's not a nice studio guitar, but I'm very challenged by seeing how good we can make it sound. (laughs) It's fun. Mm. But why not aim, aim, you know, aim high and do that. That's, uh, when when I was talking about back in that other band, Mike Cup Drums, we would, and honestly, you know, with the uh, with definitely not full on studio uh, expensive microphones, um, we'd be referencing, you know, like the, the Black Album Metallica drum sound, and you're like, right, we'll aim there. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Which is still now, you know, one of for me, I think the sound that they got from the drums in that album was. Is, is like phenomenal and it still sounds so incredible the, the way that they just captured the sound so like right, we'll try and do that but obviously if we failed miserably <laughs> what we were doing <laughs> that's um, funny. but um yeah you know i think yeah there's aim aim high and do do what you can but like you say i think technology has allowed us to do things that were um, just impossible uh, years some years ago when we at least when we started making music it was uh, none of that stuff really existed or it was really expensive or it was belonged only in the studio that you had to you know pay for studio time to access and now look where we're at now just some years later everyone has access to these incredible sounding softwares and uh, other libraries and things just at home is kind of crazy really when you think about how quickly that's changed um, yeah yeah it, uh, you I'm, know I'm the, glad. The, the kind of funny thing i heard someone say is like you know it's it's so easy there's just like so much stuff out there and it it can be challenging to sift through and find you know good stuff because literally everybody can release something now but you know in our own worlds uh as you're saying it it can be so fun to to make things work and and uh, just sort of dig however deep you want to go into getting a sound that pleases you yeah exactly and that's it is there's just endless opportunities to i think to get that sound now but it is it's staggering the amount of things that are there to inspire you i think are you know, it's quite overwhelming, really. Uh, yeah, these yes, companies and these places, they're releasing stuff every every month that you're just, wow. And actually, sometimes I'll see something and go, oh, that's just going to be so helpful <laughs> where what I'm doing right now. And then there are things that you just think, oh, I know I'll never use this. So oh, I'll just try and, you know, make sure I don't <laughs> get um, too interested to want to buy it or... I'm grateful for it in, in some respect because it's you know it allows you to have an entire orchestra in your in your computer you know and otherwise it'd be impossible and a whole range of other weird and wonderful things too uh, but in all of those things there's inspiration and that's we sometimes when I'm when I'm lacking in inspiration it only takes sometimes one one sound of one particular uh library or some something that is enough to go oh yeah okay this this is something here and then you can build on it um so i think yeah we've got a lot of flexibility to to hand now which i'm grateful for (laughs) (laughs) indeed well tell me what you have um in store for the rest of the year or anything that you're looking forward to for the rest of the year we well, uh, Judy's album is on is in August, so we're just there'll be you know we're doing some sort of promotion things for that. Um, and when it's a really exciting album, actually, when you speak to her, it's a concept album, and I love concept albums actually. But there's a really interesting story that runs through it, and the whole album takes place over a period of of like one evening. So the songs kind of relate to a story that gets told in a certain order. 
so we'll be sort of yeah, hopefully pushing that a little bit and then hopefully we can do a couple more collaboration songs i i do want to sort of get back into writing some more uh some more original music as well sort of put that on hold a little bit this last year but um i'm also doing some music for a short film i'm not sure when that's coming out but i haven't actually started doing too much of that yet so one of my aims is to create music for film and tv to some extent hopefully starting in that world as well uh, a little bit and yeah con just trying to constantly write music um for with that in mind as well actually so even some like shorter tracks uh and uh like library music for film and tv is one of my one of my focuses and aims to try and do as well um but with judy especially uh i would love to do a couple more uh collaboration songs now that we've got the the album done so yeah i think that that should hopefully do it for the year yeah, definitely it sounds uh, like a busy busy year with some exciting stuff and i'm looking i think i'm talking to judy like week after next um i'll i'll not be doing any interviews next week but um i think as soon as i cool. get back from travel i'll be talking to her so it'll be really nice timing that uh that you and i chatted just before and i know that yeah. you're minus cube on most of the socials, with maybe the exception of Twitter, which is minus underscore cube, if I remember correctly. And Correct. Yeah, even... that's, that's true, because <laughs> someone else had it. So. <laughs> <laughs> and there's even a, um, uh, is it minus cube band or minus cube on uh, the website? Uh, no, uh, it's, there yeah, minus cube band actually... com. Yeah, there is. And I'll be honest with you, I've not updated that website for probably about eight years. <laughs> so well, the socials definitely, it. yeah, the socials definitely look um, up to date. The website still looks good, by the way. <laughs> but I thought, thank you. I, I probably, um, <laughs> I thought I probably shouldn't even mention it because this is clearly past what you what you've been working on lately. But, uh, <laughs> but it looks like most of your I, socials are there. So that's good. The social media side of it is the better place and Bandcamp is a good place for music listening um as well as youtube but uh yeah that website was um it took so long to do I was, i've i like trying to do website stuff but um it just took me forever to create and then updating it just felt like a chore uh, and i'll be honest like it's just got it went right to the back of my mind um so yeah i wouldn't recommend that website for anything new uh, it's a glimpse into the past, <laughs> which has been untouched for <laughs> for years now. So uh, one day when I've got some time, um, I should actually probably delete all that stuff and update it properly because it's really out of date now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it still looks good. And I, I noticed it's also minus cube on Bandcamp, minus cube dot Bandcamp dot com for anybody who wants to yes. check it out. And man, it was a pleasure talking to you and getting to know you here. I was worried about like, uh, what am I, I going to ask him? But I think I think it went really well. What do you think? Thank you. Yeah, no, it's been great fun. I just yeah, it's just great to talk about you know music and like our shared experiences with it too. I think it's quite nice to have a bit of common ground with um, the things that we've done too. You know, sharing shared experiences and a love of music really and creating things, which uh, is you know what it's all about really. Agreed, agreed, and I look forward to checking out your new creations in the in the coming coming months. And I will talk to you soon, regardless when this episode is out. Brilliant! Thank you so much, Rebecca. Great talking with you. This episode was powered by Podcast Startup. If you feel you need a little help with that podcast you're contemplating, Podcast Startup may be just the thing for you. Podcast Startup is a program designed for new podcasters. Did you know that most podcasts don't make it past their first few episodes? That's right. They start, they stall, and then they die. Sustaining a podcast ain't easy. It's commitment. A lack of planning and misaligned expectations are a recipe for fast burnout and fade out for podcasters. This is is exactly the kind of thing that Podcast Startup was designed to help you with. If you're intrigued, if you want to start a podcast the right way, go to unstarvingmusician.com forward slash podcast startup to learn more and to receive free podcast startup tips from yours truly. Thank you for listening. You can leave us feedback, questions, comments, complaints at unstarvingmusician.com forward slash feedback. If you enjoyed this podcast, please follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. 
If you love this podcast, please visit unstarvingmusician.com forward slash crowd sponsor to learn about the many ways of showing your love and support. Your support does indeed equal love. The series music you heard in this episode is New Gods Part 2 by yours truly. Find links for all the places to hear the full version with vocals by yours truly at robonzo.com. If you do not yet have a website for your music, check out Bandzoogle. It was created to help musicians and bands build their website and manage direct to fan marketing and sales. Bandzoogle has amazing design options, a commission-free store to sell music, merch, tickets, and more, plus tools that can capture detailed fan data for you. Try it at bandzoogle.com. Use the promo code Robonzo, that's R-O-B-O-N-Z-O, to get 15% off your first year. Find links for all the people and things talked about in this episode at unstarvingmusician.com. Peace, love, and a whole lot of gratitude.